These riots were not about race. No, this was about people with a twisted moral code. We found a street, didn't I? <laughs> Christmas elves came early. We've got to show the party is over. Hi, I'm Raj, you're watching The Fan Carpet, and we're here at the Childline screening of Urban Hymn. What drew me to the film was the script, first and foremost, a beautiful script, quite a scary script in the sense of how was I going to do this, how do you get to the bottom of this character uh, in such a short space of time, and also Michael Caton-Jones drew me to the script. He asked me, phoned me up, and I'd worked with him 20 years ago, he gave me one line in Rob Roy, <laughs> so it was like 20 years later, I said, OK, I had to wait that long to come work with you again. Um, so I just liked the whole package really and I didn't have very much time, I, I didn't have very much time to make a decision and I thought just jump in there and see what happens. I was, I was visiting a friend, I couldn't go anywhere for a little while but apart from that I wasn't actually anywhere near them or involved with them, no. I'm not as extreme as Leanne but I certainly relate to her on a sort of human level of um, tapping into insecurities and inferiority that we all have as human beings. Um, and on the day of the riots, I was going to a house party in Ealing, and I got a text from my mum saying, look, please don't go out. I just thought that was her just being overprotective. But as we came out of Ealing Broadway 2, we saw, we heard this, this massive noise and then this group of people just running running towards us and it was quite scary. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't quite know the extent of it or what it was at the time. Well, I had been looking to make a, a small film for a while. I'd, been, I'd done plenty of big ones. Um, I was looking to make a film uh, with female leads. And I was looking to make a film, if I could find, that involved a lot of music. Uh, and this, when I read the script, had the, all those elements in, in spades. And I thought this would be something that I would love to jump in on. Even though it was a very cheap film, we didn't have any money. It was going, That was going to make it hard. But I... I'm more motivated by material and by what I can possibly make out of it than anything else, whether it's big or small, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't want to say a role model because I'm only human, you know, I, I can make mistakes too and when you say you're a role model, everybody expects you to be perfect. I would just like to, I, I hope to be someone who can be of influence and inspiration in a positive way, but to also for people to remember that I'm a human as well, I can sometimes make mistakes. So that's your get out clause, is it? It's it's not even a get out clause, it's just, just keeping it real, you know. Not to say that I, I'm going to run around and do something stupid, but just, just yeah, like, I, I'm trying my best to just be a good example, a good influ of, of a positive influence to, to young people. I hope that people take away from it that, you know, your actions always have consequences, um, and that if you want something, you have to work really hard for it, no matter what your background is or where you come from. I don't know, they don't have to go and see it, nobody has to do anything, but if you'd like to go and see it, um, go and see it. Yeah, go and see it because it, well, it kickstarts off with the riots. It's not really about the riots in any way, but it's a kickstart. It's showing two young women who are living in the moment, they're living on the day and they're not thinking about tomorrow or the repercussions of anything. Um, and it's not, it's not a document, it's not really about that. It takes that and it runs with it. And my character enters their world and uh, rocks and ripple, ri a rocking and a ripple effect happens and they start to question what is this thing that I've been doing, what is all this about and I'm questioning my life, we're all questioning everything. If you like a good drama, if you like, see how the mind works and the decisions that we make then go and see this. I hope the youth can take away the fact that they have something that every each and every one of them has a, has a talent and they just have to be willing to tap into that and um, be willing to to express that in a positive way and not to hide it um, I, 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 I pray that you know the kids can see this as an inspiration to to not do something that's you know negative and just to turn turn a negative into a positive yes it is absolutely is um, you know, when you're making something small, yeah. you, you don't have the choices you have when, you, when you're making something uh, bigger. Yeah. And you, you don't therefore go for safety. Sometimes there is only one shot and there is only one take and it's in the film. It's either in the film or it's out the film. Uh, and it was my complete control which uh, made it what it is. So if it's good, it's good because of that. If it's bad, it's bad because of that. But that's, you know, that's kind of the gig with every film you make. And it was really a fantastic uh, uh, film to make. and surprisingly I wouldn't say easy I was a bit surprisingly um, 
it made you feel good, and the making of it made you feel good. Not what the film ended up being, but the, the, the actual going through the process was just was one of the best filmmaking experiences I've had. What's the main thing you can look forward to? You can look forward to all of the emotion coming out, everything, um, and actually that she's hopefully someone like Leanne is not someone that you would you would write off in an instant. Actually, that she, you know she. She is a human being and she doesn't deserve to be just another statistic. Well, I think it's inspirational. Um, I think it it might motivate you to make a decision and to, to make a final decision in your life that you haven't made, but that's maybe looking at it very deeply. I think you should just go and enjoy the film and hopefully feel something, even though there's tenderness, there's sadness, there's all kinds of emotions going through, even at, at the end you'll feel, I'm, I'm satisfied. I can understand why everybody made the decisions. I hope so. I hope so. I hope as many people can see it, not just in this country, but all around the world. I learned that there, there, are, people who, there are people who have a voice that's unheard. Um, um, I learned that they're really hurting. They're really, really hurting, and no one's paying attention to that. Everyone's seeing the bad stuff and like really quick to put them away. But they're they they're, they're young people who who need someone just to talk to and just to say, hey, okay, I see behind this wall that you're putting up, and let me just know you more. And I feel like in this film, Shirley does that for Jamie, and she starts to like just tear down the walls, and then she can be able to get through to her. And that's when Jamie started to open up. Well, I think they're fantastic. I think that, that, you know, even when you're sitting in the editing room, cutting it, you're looking at them again and again and again and again, and you begin to notice things that you never noticed at the time because you were rushing. And I'm just in awe of those three leads. You know, they're fantastic. I think this is a, I think what an audience is going to find, they're going to be surprised because these are, they're not showy actors, they're not saying, look at me. Uh, they're not playing superheroes, they're playing normal people, but they play them so well that you get completely engrossed in their life and you completely care about what's happening to them. And I don't think that happens too often nowadays in films. Oh, oh, wow. Um, what would my message be? Uh, work. Work hard, work bloody hard at what you love. What do I have to say? I just, just let's try to listen to each other more and, and, um, and listen to, to the people who actually live in the countries that you serve as well because um, we all have a, a valid opinion and um, pray that you guys can do things well. I think it's got worse for them. I mean, I think it's got worse for society, you know, because I think it's, you know, the, the disparity between rich and poor is now huge or is bigger than it's ever been. I think we're not, as a society, inclined to help each other as much as we used to. And I think it's gotten a bit more selfish. Uh, I, you know, I'm an old man, so I can remember when it actually wasn't like that. Um, but I feel, you know, if you look at Jeremy Corbyn and if you look at... Uh, Bernie Sanders in the States, what you see is there's a whole load of dis dissatisfaction with what it is at the moment, and th th they would like to change. Whether they can or not at the moment is not the point, but there is, a, a, in society, a big desire to change things, I think, at the moment. Well, it's a lovely film. It's a really feel-good, pure entertainment, uh, just gorgeous. Renee's fantastic in it, so... Oh, I have no idea. These things take... What, what did it take, 10 years for the last one? <laughs> that one, so maybe I might be a bit too old by then. <laughs> You never know, though. 20 years for, yeah. a, for, a, for this film, so 10 years? You never know, that's it, yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. See you next time on Fan Carpet. Even if it's just for a moment, I'm so happy.